All right, guys, it is one o'clock and we are right before July 4th weekend. So I want to wish everyone a happy holiday as far as trading today. Uh, they kept the market in the game. We talked this morning about deja vu. We talked about how you had Friday's huge move um, with the EU news that came out, whether you know it'll lead to something um, bigger or lead to a system or a framework that works. Who knows? But at this particular point, we talked about market dynamics that you know that people weren't expecting anything to happen. You had the end of the quarter, and you had a lot of people short. And what did that do? That initiated a huge squeeze. Over the weekend, there was bad news everywhere, but people discounted it, saying, you know what? And that's the reason why they finally, on their 19th summit, um, came in and actually put something in place uh, a little bit stronger. And then the last few days, we've been inching higher. Spiders have been holding higher. So what that does is it keeps the shorts trapped and it doesn't let people in. And we've seen some nice participation from a lot of our go-to stocks. Um, Apple about hit 600 today, you know, Visa, MasterCard, Amazon, decent moves. And then you had a spirited move in the commodities. We talked about how se sector rotation happens, where we talked, um, I know Jill's been all over with the third quarter saying, going into the third quarter, the ag's gonna be on fire. And they started about two, three weeks before then, had certain type of setups to get in them from the bottom. You know, the banks have been trading off the lows and, you know, strategically moving higher. So there's been a lot going on here. So let me just, you know, show you a quick chart of the spiders. If you come in here, you'll see close up. Um, here is the spiders. So here is that big move with a huge gap that wasn't even, you know, even tested or near tested above the moving averages. So right there, you know, that was um, very constructive. Let me get my little tool here because I'm not used to doing it here. I'll get you my line tools. So this was the gap up that did not get tested right there. If you recall this inverted head and shoulders pattern, okay, right there, that line, here was a first measured move. We pulled back, retested this bottom of the, the right shoulder. Remember the left shoulder, the head, the right shoulder. We held here. This was also that 61% retracement. And now, you know, <laughs> the pain trades on. You have here 137.56. That's where we stalled briefly right here. So if you want to go across that, you know, actually became, that was actually a good micro short point. I tweeted about shorting some there and then covered a little bit on the way in. And then really they want to keep this thing going. Uh, you have a gap fill that could take it all the way to the low here of about 139.50. It starts at like, so really <laughs> 138.50, is also the measured move of the neckline all the way up. And that would complete the measured move of this in inverted uh, head and shoulders pattern. So with that said, you know, you have the ECB on Thursday and it's kind of very similar to last uh, year, right around this time, there was so many things you didn't want to be short against. So if, if they couldn't pull the market in ahead of that, if they come out, um, people are talking about cutting a quarter. Um, I think that would be a, another little bit of a squeeze. And if they surprise with a half to really put some insurance out there um, with the news from last Friday, that <laughs> you're gonna see that 138 half, 139 half uh, in, in a heartbeat. If you look at gold and oil, you know, oil held that macro level, that 77-ish level, and now it's back to almost 86, 87. I see resistance up to about 92. I'd rather see you sell some 90 to 92 in oil versus buying it up there. Gold, I'm a glutton for punishment. If you go to the GLD, you will see um, right here where we're brushing right back against this, um, <laughs> this downtrend once again, this intermediate downtrend that's been controlling this trade. I do not know why I added to it today, but you know, you have 148.50 that held very well right there. And now, you know, coming into here, I have a feeling with gold being streaky, it's not going to wait. So if the ECB cuts a quarter or a half, you know, gold or the GLD could be gapping up to this level pretty quickly. You know, and if you take a look here, there's definitely some room for it to, you know, for it to go. It's been trapped in this, uh, you know, this downtrend that we've talked about since the high here back in August. And you know, how many times are the shorts going to be able to be rewarded, you know, coming into this zone? So I know I've tried it in the past. I think I lost money here. I lost money there. But if I'm not going to do it again, you know, I, I've tried it too many times. But anyway, you know, you, you do have other stocks making moves. You know, Apple, um, Sprong's been all over the trade. We've been in it since he's been, you know, 584. I think he even started on Friday while I wasn't here. If you look at Apple, you know, nice move, nice extension. You know, if you wanted to take some off, that's fine. I, I do think that you had some entries that I, that I talked about. If you look at your line tools, you know, you can go back to here one more time. Uh, this was, you know, the, the, when it ignited on Friday on the price point sheet, we had it right here at 584. 
and then your last entry was right here around 590. So if you're going to start chasing Apple, you know, here after a four day move, you know, it, it could continue, but it's just a hard trade to do. We filled this gap. I talked about it also. This gap fill was 650. So you go across, that's where it is. Overall on a macro basis, I do think these highs are taken out, but you know, there'll be a time and a place for that. And, um, you know, I think, um, you know, Visa acted pretty well. It's hanging in there. MasterCard, okay. I talked about the AGs, you know, spirited move. This was that red dog reversal, pow, into resistance. Really nice move off the low as a bottom feeder trade. You know, if you sold well, you could have really got back involved in here. You know, some of those stocks in there, look at Monsanto. Best of breed always goes to highs first. Nice breakout above this level here of 80. You know, we'll see what happens with CF. Also very, very strong. You know, I talk about lower level downtrends because they also are really good catalysts for moves. So if you go to your line tools here, you go to your segment, this is right here, okay? Sometimes, you know, when things break down, this was, remember, the false breakout, and that's your sell signal. Another sell signal was when it broke below here. You know, then you could have been out of the way, got rid of all this noise. You had a low, a higher low, another higher low, and here was your catalyst to get in, the retest, and pow. So overall, you know, very methodical if you got out <clears throat> the right way. And even, the, you know, the lower tier names, like a mosaic, talked about the red dog reversal right here. Okay, after being weak all year, the stock was so weak and so out of play, you know, trending lower, trending lower, trending lower, and it's still only coming back into test resistance. But overall, if you know how to time this, this trade, you know, you had your, you know, your, your, your Jill who said she loved it. So she was in tier one. We were waiting for some type of um, entry to, to get in or some kind of setup. And here it is, your red dog reversal, made a new lows on the year, closed strong. Your, your buy price was anywhere around 45.88. You saw follow through. So if you were in for a day and a half, that's all you wanted. You know, if you were swinging it, you didn't have to get out and never violated. And if you're looking for that lower level pivot breakout, like we talk W sometimes, here's your W, boom. You know, and then boom, right about right above this 49.40, <laughs> there you go. So a lot of different types of entries. All you have to do is pick which one. A bottom, commitment, lower level pivot, Here's your extension and you know, I would actually even took back to 200 days. So anyone short probably capitulated. Now it could use a little bit of a rest. Guys are asking me about FIO. I don't think it's anything so special, but you know, it's something ignited it right here. Nice sideways consolidation, you know, so it could continue. Sperling, another lower level trade was all over Netflix today. It's been out of play. It's been a piece of junk, but you know what? Time and place, um, you can make some money. We tweeted about two different prices. You know, one was right here. Actually, I think this was the price. No, you had one right here, which was 69.53, and then 70.48 is when he was talking about it. It closed at 72. Nice move. You know, maybe it continues a little bit higher. You know, you saw some decent volume down here. So overall, you know, people are complaining about the action. People are complaining about growth slowing around the world. There are some things you could uh, complain about and be in control of, and there are some things you can actually control. And lately, since you know last week, there's been a lot to do unless you're just blindly shorting the market. I know I said above 137.50, I was net short, and it, and it actually wound up being a good spot. But overall, you know, if you were net short from last week, you're not, you know, putting on that spider hedge from 137.5 to 139.5. You're probably capitulating your short into what would be a sellable area because you didn't switch gears early last Friday. So a lot of ways to approach it. Um, again, there was some, you know, Fink was on Bloomberg talking. And I, I talk about longer term macro also. He actually said, because I've said it too, so it rung a bell. I'm like, he's like, if you're 35 years old and you have a, a long term plan, it, it must be in equities. And I agree. I think you have to either be a stock picker and really know your stuff, or you could do what my wife does in a 401k, put in an S&P 500 fund, you know, have, you know, put a certain percentage, hopefully your business matches it and do it every single month for the next 15, 20 years, and every time there's craziness, you put a little bit more and you're gonna make money for your nest egg and for retirement. And then there's also guys that trade on an intermediate trend basis that really have to pay attention in order to clip out five, six percent at a, at a time, get the best stocks, you know, be able to be short the ags or avoid the ags for the first half and then maybe buy them. Same way with the OAHs, same way you find you know a lot of these stocks or you know the tech stocks or whatnot. So there's all different time frames. Everyone wants something different. Figure out it is what you want. And lastly, as a trader, I know there are a lot of guys who feel like they were caught flat-footed um, last week. 
it is what it is. Okay, you're only halfway into this year. We're July 4th. There's a lot of year left. You're either going to let it stew and drive you crazy or you're going to you know, leave it at the doorway, have fun this, in the next two days, the next day and a half, enjoy your family, enjoy your friends, and figure out what you did wrong, work on that, write it down, and then figure out what you've done well and, and work on that to get it better because there's going to be a lot of trading between now and the end of the year. And don't dwell on the past. You know, work on the future. Scott Riley, T3 Live, enjoy the, the 4th of July, and I'll see you uh, Thursday morning bright and early. Hello everybody, my name is Pete Renzulli, Chief Marketing Officer of T3Live.com and one of the traders in the active mentor room for T3 Trading Group. What I'd like to do today is I'm really, really excited about introducing you to and inviting you to the first T3 Live Active Trader Summit in New York City, which is on Saturday, July 14th. We're going to have quite a few speakers today. There's going to be myself, Mike Lee, Evan Lazarus, Mark Sperling, Rob Smith, Rick Meadows. There's going to be a ton of great content, but the number one reason you want to come is you want to be able to network and associate with other like-minded people like myself. I'm going to pump you up. I'm going to guarantee you that. Other people like yourself who have a burning desire to learn how to be a trader. So I'm going to ask you to make a trade. Trade one Saturday for some of your time to come down and learn strategies, tactics, techniques, and put some faces to the people that you see in the virtual trading floor in T3 Live and learn to take your trading bigger. Learn how to be a better trader than you are now. Learn the strategies. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't stress that. I know it's a Saturday, but you know what? I want you to be there to get excited and to be here. Prove to yourself how bad you want it. Show up and come down and get excited with us. Saturday, July 14th. Now, very quickly for the registration. All you have to do is register at t3live.com or be an existing member of t3live.com and you get two complimentary admission tickets for free. So all you have to do is go to t3live.com and register. If you would like to join us at the post-event cocktail reception, you can also upgrade to either premium or VIP. That's up to you, but either way, please take advantage of the general admission, two free tickets, bring a friend, bring a neighbor, bring a wife, bring a girlfriend, maybe bring both, but come down and expect to have a great time. Saturday, July 14th here in New York City.